join us. Circle the globe. The planet is your hunting paradise. And one man will show you the world as you've never seen it before. Danger won't stop him. Nature won't break him or prevent him from doing the impossible. Hunting the Earth with bow and arrow. Be there to share this adventure. The ultimate journey for the ultimate shot. Many animals in Africa are territorial, and they'll stake out their domain. In this episode of Ultimate Shot, you'll see what happens when a male puku invades the territory and domain of another dominant male. Stay tuned for the Ultimate Shot. During my hunting adventures, I have been able to see many African countries, each one unique with its own natural and cultural places of interest each one exhibiting a fragment of the incredible animal world which makes the African continent so varied and coveted by us as hunters. But there is one thing in which all the animal world here is united, and this is water. During the dry season, when even big rivers like the Luangwa have shrunk more than three times, water becomes the gravitational force for all antelope, elephants, and buffalo herds, not to speak of the pools crowded with hippos. At such times, we the hunters, lucky enough to be here, feel immersed in a world of plenty. Our dreams come true. I am here, sitting in front of the camp, and 40 meters behind me, crossing the river, is an elephant, which, while I am putting down these notes, splashes noisily through the shallows. I feel free to do what I have always dreamed of, to dash off into the bush along an antelope trail only with my bow and arrows, the way our forefathers did. Is it, there's something else in there, isn't there? No. Oh. The buku was right there. As you have guessed, Today we will head up river and try to find one specific animal. According to our host PJ, the puku antelope he saw there two days ago was very, very big. I will look after these ones. I see a guinea fowl. Oh, that's right. Now he's trying to catch up on guinea fowl. He's got guinea fowl already. <laughs> on our way, we will also try our luck with bushbuck, as the road anyway ran parallel to the winding river. I might be able to take a shot at some old hippo, too. The day promised to be nice after the aromatic coffee and the dramatic view in front of camp. Andre's two sons expressed their desire to accompany us, so we would have reinforcements in the search for guinea fowl. PJ explained that they were skilled marksmen, and if we happened to miss shooting some fresh chicken for the kitchen, they would save the day. There was nothing to fear today, as we had at our disposal three professional hunters as our leaders. The view of monkeys, impala, and all kinds of fowl is really impressive, as the animals by the water make the sandy banks come to life. The two young hunters in our group constantly competed with each other in defining the species and age of the numerous antelope. They even tried to measure the circumference of an age-old rubber tree. It must have been at least 200 or 300 years old. How many times had this tree woken up to find an antelope killed by a leopard in its huge branches? Ah! 
While we drove the truck slowly along the river, the sound of a water buck made us get down from the truck and examine very carefully the place which looked full of life. We were hearing the bush buck from somewhere in this wilderness, but we could not spot it among the tall dried grass, bushes, and stumps. A real paradise for a secretive bush buck. We advanced toward the sound slowly. We could hear its shrieks already coming from about 10 to 15 yards, but I could not see it. We stood still for a few seconds, and then I heard its cautious steps and saw it run. It was retreating. It was very young, but in the distance, below the dry bushes, I also saw its opponent, with which they had had a deafening war. I had a slight chance of threading the arrow successfully through the thorns and the branches. I decided to give it a go. I had next to zero chance of success, but that was our first bush buck that was a relatively good trophy, and I would be out of time soon. The next antelope that we tried to approach was a beautiful puku, an old male with elegant twisted horns which were spread wide at the top. It seemed we were out of luck. So we decided to ask for help from our secret reinforcements, who could save us from returning to camp empty-handed. Right. Our secret weapons had to be put into use. Andrew would have the honor of being the one for all. A black stork, a good shot, although only for the videographer. Andrew had to hit something rather smaller and far more deceptive among the dry grasses on the ground, guinea fowl. Guinea fowl were not easy to hunt at all. They are among the most widely spread on the African continent. You find them almost everywhere and most probably they have run the whole way there because they are exceptional runners and fly only as a last resort. It would not be easy to catch up with them and I could also try to shoot with my smooth barreled gun. Andrew would have to cope with his small caliber gun from a very long distance. Like a true sniper, Andrew brought down the bird with one shot, and one of the trackers went to fetch it while we excitedly congratulated the young hunter. The merry mood and commotion quickly died down at the blood-curdling sound of an irritated elephant. That was the end of our trip inside the bush. We had to be close to the car if the elephants attacked us. It was safest for the boys not to get down from the truck at all. We all agreed there was no point taking a risk here, where there was absolutely no cover against the elephants. We would be easy prey if they decided to attack us. Andrew was accurate and deadly again, like a true professional hunter. Andre had prepared him very well for living in the bush. Many young men must now be envious of you, Andrew.
That was three out of three for Andrew. The result was a little unnerving for us, the other hunters in the truck. The only one not envious of the boy at the moment was Mark, because he knew he was a better fisherman. It looked as though the elephants were quite irritated now, and we decided to get some distance between us and them. Anyway, the car was overflowing with game, and we had to give it to the camp cook in order to make us an incredible, tasty, and aromatic stew. Mark was quick to boast of his brother's hunting feet. PJ told us once more how to get to the place where he had seen the puku antelope. Andre had not been to that remote area, and he was glad for the opportunity to hear more details from PJ. After that, we sat down at the table to taste the culinary masterpieces of the cook. Meanwhile, the conversation got round to the hunting feet of the very best hunter in our group this morning. Andrew and Mark were at the height of their happiness from the attention lavished on them. In this episode of Ultimate Shock, you'll see what happens when transient hippo bulls invade the domain of dominant herd bulls. Stay tuned for the ultimate shock. Our plan for the afternoon was to travel close to the river like we did in the morning as the route to the Puku Antelope passed by there and watch out for bushbuck or hippos. This elephant herd was very close to camp. It was very interesting for me that the elephants realized the camp was not a threat to them and wandered absolutely freely among the huts every night. Well, not every, but every other night. Interestingly, one night before I went to bed, Spook, the camp elephant, which regularly checked if we had left any alcohol at the bar, munched on leaves for a long time, about 10 inches away from me, behind the brittle reed wall, and I was sure it knew I was there. This place was really very exciting, and if it were not for the flies, I could stay and live here. Our coming to the river was not in vain. We watched a real duel between two male hippos. We were witnesses to the direct clash between the pretender and the herd's leader. Bigger than the old hippo. 
This guy's probably been a loser a few times. He's on the road. Look, he's on the road big time trying to find So you need to watch that guy, see where he goes. Yeah. If it's fully good luck, it will be a moment when shut up with his head. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a really good one to take. Yeah, him. I do too. You know, the chance that he's got um, abnormally long teeth is yeah. this big. Yeah. So yeah. You need to watch him, see where he goes. Mm -hmm. I will spend a lot of time resting outside the river in tickets. Despite staying a long time to watch the hippos, we managed before twilight to find the large meadow where PJ had sent us. I even think we saw the animal in question. It may have been a different one, but it certainly could be distinguished among the others with its big horns. We had to find a way to approach it in this open terrain. We did not intend to crawl for an hour towards it, so we chose the risky move of detouring in an arc and using a tree and a group of bushes as cover in order to get to at least 70 to 80 yards so I had a chance of a shot. This distance, however, gave the animal a chance to move at the last milliseconds of the arrow's flight. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's definitely coming back. I was confused and thankful for what the other animals did. They literally brought me back the wounded puku, as you can see too. I still cannot fathom it, but it was the biggest puku antelope ever taken with a bow, the new world record. This is a 
Zambian cuckoo. And, uh, it's interesting after you shot them, else came and um, they're territorial. And after being shot, he ran into somebody else's territory. Yeah. And you were fortunate enough they, for him to be chased back, they chased back, back towards us. Yeah. yeah. They're nice and th they're very thick, they're heavily ridged. Played out beautifully at the top. Yeah. Yeah, he's just like you say. He turned out a beautiful male. We came out looking for this one. PJ Fouget, our host, uh, had seen it and had a picture of it. And now we do too. So thanks, PJ.